Hi folks, this is Nat, and this is going to be your video lesson on circles. We're going to do a whole bunch of things with circles. First, we're going to cover the different parts, which hopefully will be a review. And we're also going to talk about calculating the areas and circumferences of circles and pieces of circles. So a lot of things to do. So when you look at a circle, there's a bunch of parts that you might need to know. The first one we're going to hit today is the center. The center is a really important part of the circle because a lot of other pieces that we care about kind of reference the center. Um, and it's the single point in the middle of the circle that is equally far from all points on the outside. So no matter where on the circle you're measuring to, if you measure from the center, it's going to be exactly the same distance to the outside of the circle. And that distance from the center to any spot on the outside is called the radius. It's a line segment that connects the center to the outside of the circle. And there are potentially an infinite number of radii in the circle. Um, we typically only care about what that distance is. So a lot of times when you talk about the radius, it's a number. And that's a measurement of the distance from the center to the outside. Another important circle part is going to be the diameter. And that's another line segment. It connects the outside of the circle to the outside of the circle through the center. So it has its endpoints on the outside of the circle. And again, it passes through the center. And the center is actually going to be the midpoint of that diam diameter. The other thing to know is that a diameter is basically double the radius. Because if the radius goes from the center to the outside, the diameter does that twice. A chord is another per uh, circle part. And it connects the outside to the outside, again, like the diameter, except a chord doesn't have to go through the center. It just has its end points on the outside. That's the only requirement. But again, it's a line segment. A vocabulary word you're going to hear a lot today is circumference. And that's going to be the outside of the circle. You might also think about it as a perimeter of the circle. Um, it's a measurement of how far it is from one side, uh, from a point on the circle all the way around it back to the same point. Lastly, in terms of our vocabulary, we're going to talk about pi because there's, you can't really talk about circles without mentioning pi. This is the Greek letter pi, P-I, not the delicious dessert. Um, it does have to do with round things, but it's still spelled just P-I. And you probably already know some portion of pi. A lot of us know that it's 3.14. Some of us know further. It actually goes on forever. So you could calculate pi for the rest of your life and never finish it. Um, it's an infinite number. Anyway, it goes on forever. And while a lot of us know, you know, a fair chunk of numbers of pi, a lot of us don't actually know what it is. It's the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of any circle. Or another way to think about it is that if you took the circumference of a circle, divided it by the diameter of that same circle, it would always equal pi. So there's a consistent relationship between circumference and diameter, and it's that the diameter times pi, 3.14159265.4, and so on, the diameter times pi will always equal the circumference of the same circle. Sometimes when we're dealing with fractions, instead of the long decimal version of pi, or just a shortened decimal like 3.14, we actually use a, a fractional version of pi, and a really close fraction to pi is actually 22 sevenths. And that's something that you might sometimes use for pi instead of a decimal value. So now that we've kind of hit all of our terminology and our vocabulary words, let's get into some of the circle calculations you'll be expected to be able to do. The first one is the easiest, and that's circumference. And it has to do, again, with that relationship with pi. Let's say that I have a circle, and I know that the diameter of the circle measures 3 inches. And I'd like to know the measure of their circumference, which is, again, the distance around the outside. The relationship there is always the same. The circumference is equal to the diameter times pi. 
And it doesn't look like we have any numbers here. Um, a lot of these are variables that get filled in, but remember pi, even when it's written this way, is just a number. And for our purposes today, we're going to use 3 and 14 hundredths, 3.14, to represent pi. So if I want to find this circumference for a 3 inch diameter, all I have to do is fill in the stuff that I know. Circumference is unknown, but it equals the diameter, which is 3, times pi, which I'm going to use 3.14. 3 and 14 hundredths will be pi for me for, for today. Using more digits of pi, more decimal places, would make my measurements slightly more accurate, but in all honesty, for most of the time, hundredths place is great. So if I take this and multiply it, 3 times 3.14, I end up with 9 and 42 hundredths, and that's going to be the value of my circumference. It's going to be 9 and 42 hundredths of an inch around the outside of the circle, more or less. Let's say again that I'm trying to find circumference, but this time I don't have the diameter. Um, a lot of the time we will see, when we're looking for anything with a circle, either the radius or the diameter, but not both. And it's really important to remember that we can get the thing we need from the other very easy, easily. The diameter is just double the radius. So here if I see that there's a 5 foot radius, that means that the diameter is going to equal 10 feet. On the reverse side of things, if I saw a 10 foot diameter, 10 all the way across, I'd know that the radius would be half that, 5 feet. So it's pretty easy to find the stuff that you want. Um, it's common enough to see the radius and not the diameter that we actually have a circumference formula, formula to account for that. Uh, we'll sometimes see our circumference formula written as circumference is equal to 2 pi r, 2 times pi times r. And it's really important to recognize that this is actually the same as the one we looked at before. The circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. Because again, if you take the 2r, two radiuses, what you end up with is the diameter. So these are the same formula, even though they might look a little bit different. And you honestly don't even need to remember both of them. One is plenty. But let's say that I want to work with 2 pi r this time. I know I'm looking for my circumference, so the circumference is unknown. Circumference is equal to 2 times pi, which is 3.14 times the radius, which is 5. 3.14 times 5 times 2, and if I solve that, I'm going to end up with 31.4. In other words, with a radius of 5 feet, it would be 31 and 4 tenths of a foot more or less, around the outside of the circle. And that's how we find circumference. Now, just like with rectangles and triangles and composite shapes, we care about things like perimeter, but we also care about area. And circumference is like the perimeter of a circle. We're also going to care about the area of a circle. And just like um, the uh, perimeter area, there's a formula for everything. So in a circle, the area of a uh, circle is given as pi times the radius squared, or pi r squared. You'll sometimes see it written like this, pi r squared. But we could also write it like this. The area is equal to pi times the radius times the radius. Because r squared is just radius times radius, right? The way we write it is not really all that important. It's important to know what we're going to do. We're going to multiply the radius by itself, and then we're going to multiply it by pi. And it has to happen in that order. So if we return to my 5-foot radius circle, to find the area of that circle, I'm going to take 5 times itself, 5 times 5, and then I'm going to multiply it by pi, 3.14, and that'll give me the area, which in this case is going to be 78 and 5 tenths square feet. And this is still measured in square units. 
So we're still talking about how many tiny little squares can fit inside that circle, right? We're dividing it up into square feet. The other thing I want you to know is that just like with the circumference, if we don't get the measurement we want, that doesn't mean we can't do what we want. So let's say I'm again looking for the area of a circle, and this time it's not a radius of five feet, but a diameter of five feet. I don't need the diameter. What I need is the radius. But the radius is really easy to find because it's always half the diameter. So if the diameter is five feet, the radius is half that, which is going to be two and a half feet. And then I'm ready to use my formula. So I'm going to do, again, area is equal to pi r squared. So basically my area equals 3.14 times 2 and 5 tenths times 2 and 5 tenths. I'm doing the radius twice, 2 and 5 tenths. Some students regularly make the mistake of thinking r squared is just 2 times the radius, which is the same as the diameter, but remember that's not the case. r squared is not the same as r times 2. It's r times itself. But at any rate, if I go ahead and multiply this all out, I discover that the area of this particular circle is going to be 19 and 625 thousandths. I might choose to round that later, but that's what it is coming out of my calculator. And once we know the basics, we can start extending those things and solving some more complex problems. So here's a half circle, not a full circle. And the information I've got is that that bottom line is six feet long. That's going to be the diameter of my circle. From here to here is six feet long. A half circle is exactly that, half of a circle. So this doesn't stop me, the fact that it's not a whole circle, from calculating the area of what I see. I'm still going to use my area formula. Area in this case, again, is pi r squared. And my radius is going to be 3 feet, again, half my diameter. So the area here is pi 3.14 times 3 times 3, which is going to be 28.6, or sorry, 28.26, 28 and 26 hundredths. Now keep in mind though, that's only, that's the area of the whole circle. If I want the area of half the circle, I'm going to have to cut it in half. So if I take that area of the whole circle, divide it by 2, I end up with the area of a half circle, which is in this case going to be 14 and 13 hundredths, the area of the thing that I'm looking at. I can make the same sort of adjustments for circumference. Let's say I want to know the distance around this half circle. Well, what I need is the circumference of half of the circle as well as the six feet diameter that accounts for the other side. So let's start with the circumference. Circumference, we said, is equal to pi times the diameter. So in this case, that's going to be 3.14 times the diameter, which is 6. And that's 18 and 84 hundredths. Now, once again, that's the entire distance, not a half of it. So I'm going to have to cut that circumference in half to account for the fact that I only have half of a circle. If I take my full circle circumference and divide it by 2, I end up with 9 and 42 hundredths as the circumference section. Now, if that's all I need, that's great. If I want the area around the, or the perimeter around the entire half circle, I'll have to add that six foot straight segment as well. So I could, if necessary, add that on and end up with 15 and 42 hundredths. But that same sort of thinking can be used to pretty much cover any circle you can imagine or any chunk of circle that you can imagine, either for area or circumference. You might see quarter circles, in which case you'd take your circumference and area and divide it by four. You might see three quarters of a circle, in which case you might multiply it by three quarters, saying I want three quarters of that circle. You might even see something like 120 degrees worth of a circle, in which case you know how big a whole circle is. It's 360, and you could take the fraction of the degrees you wanted. And that's pretty much it. Um, here are your practice problems. For each of these, find both the circumference or perimeter and the area. Good luck.